one of the reasons Donald Trump spoke to so many white working class voters was because of the way he talked about American trade policy. Public Citizen just published a report about how actually America's trade policy disproportionately impacts black and Latinx workers. Lori Wallach, director of Public Citizen's Global Trade Watch, you are here from Public Citizen. Talk about what is in that report. So what we found was a little bit contrary to the conventional wisdom that, say, Donald Trump had been pushing out. In fact, we found that in nine of the 10 most heavily trade damaged sectors of the economy, where the, the most jobs were lost, the most imports flooded in, Black and Latino workers were disproportionately represented relative to their share in the overall workforce. And we found that the states that were most, the hardest hit with certified job losses from trade were where the vast majority of Black and Latino Americans live. What are the, what, what areas of work uh, are, are we talking about here? So amongst the sectors were autos and automotive parts, furniture, electronics manufacturing, um, what's called basic metals, so the steel workers, smelters, and as well textiles and apparel. But we also found in call center outsourcing, it's disproportionately people of color. And that's been another sector outside of manufacturing where there's been mass offshoring to the Philippines and other countries to try and bust unions here as you know, your bank's back office, the airline's back offices, but also just you know the, the, the phone companies, et cetera, they've offshored that work too. It's so interesting, the, those sectors that you named, I'm a first generation Italian American, those are the sectors that uh, my, uh, you know, my Italian immigrant relatives all worked in manufacturing, steel mills, that kind of stuff. It's it's fast. It's just nothing's changed as it turns out, except instead of the jobs being here, the jobs are somewhere else now. Well, and the jobs don't pay a living wage. I mean, yes, things were very hard when your first generation got here. I'm first generation too, Jewish. Same thing. Those are the sectors that all the immigrants went to. But you're right. My dad was able to support our family without, you know, there was no hunger in my family, really, um, on those wages. And the, you know, the 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 thing that's happened is the companies have used the trade agreements to make it much safer and easier to offshore those jobs to places where there is no ability for our ancestors, and now we all Americans benefit, have unions that fought for living wages and the weekend and health and safety that across the economy, not just in, for those union members, has raised all of our standards of living. The jobs are going to places like China or Mexico, where there are no independent unions. You know, in Mexico, real wages now are lower than, than in, in coastal China, because 30 years after NAFTA, the total absence of any labor rights has meant that basically all that investment, all those middle class paying jobs in the U.S. that went over a million certified by the government that were lost to NAFTA that went to Mexico, workers there didn't get the benefit. The boss got the benefit. They could pay, they're the paying people two dollars an hour to do the exact same job that a worker in the U.S., a union worker would get, you know, twenty five, thirty dollars to do. And anyone in the U.S. would certainly get multiples per hour of what people are getting per day. Lori, we just saw an insurrection on the Capitol where white, mostly male, mostly working class with the addition of some actual elected officials. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. Um, people were up in arms. A, a lot of it was about, you know, they feel apparently uh, victimized. Also, they're white supremacists. We won't go there in this in this particular interview, but Donald Trump spoke to so many of them because of the way he talked about American trade policy. What was he right about? What was he wrong about? And why aren't Democrats speaking about these issues too? So what Donald Trump was talking about is what congressional Democrats, the vast majority of them have been saying for the last 30 years since NAFTA. So Democratic presidents have been resoundingly bad on trade 
Mm. Please God, that mm. president elect Biden, who certainly sounded different in the run up to the election, has gotten the message about the necessity for Democrats to rethink trade policy and create a new policy that puts working people on the planet first. Because what Trump got right is what congressional Democrats have been saying, which frankly is just what the data say. Over three and a half million US jobs have been certified as lost to our trade policies since NAFTA and WTO under a really narrow program for special benefits that you have to like get through all kinds of qualifications. We've lost almost 6 million of our manufacturing jobs since NAFTA and WTO. That's one fourth of every manufacturing job in the country in less than 30 years. And so here's a real grievance. And it's not, by the way, just the middle of the country. Parts of Texas, parts of California, parts of New York have been some of the hardest hit as far as the intensity of the trade related offshoring and job loss. So, uh, yes, people, I'm from Syracuse, New York. In no, the whole area. Whole area has been gutted gutted and whole communities have been devastated because when that factory goes and Juliana, we have lost more than 60,000 factories, manufacturing facilities. It, it's, and by the way, as your listeners are thinking about this, it's not just, are we going to have jobs for the 70% of Americans who don't have college degrees? And it's the answer is not for everyone to get a college degree. The answer is, are we going to be able to make things? Because this is actually a- You situation. can have a college degree and not be able to get a computer or a desk. <laughs> you know, this exactly. is Exactly. It's a security issue. We saw this during COVID. We can't make or get the basic things we need- Toilet paper. For our country to stay alive in an emergency. Mm -hmm. That can't be. That can't be. So even if you hate unions and hate manufacturing workers, and it's not about you, we need a manufacturing sector in this country so that you can get medicine so that you can get food, so that you can get vehicles, so that we have communication systems. Maybe the next virus is a computer one and it wipes out all of our communication systems and fries all everything. Where do we think we get all of the goods on which we rely for our safety, security and lives? A vast majority of it, too much of it is imported from one or two countries. We need to rebuild our own resilience and diversify our imports. And this report where we found the black and Latino workers had been on the short end of the stick, that was basically showing that this is an issue that if Biden wants to rebuild our country and build it back better and wants to address racial justice, both things he's committed to, then one of the first things they have to do is rebuild, replace, rethink mm -hmm. our trade policies. Talk about um, some of the individual trade policies that are impacting Black and Latinx workers. Before we go off and talk about um, now that the Democrats hold the Senate, what can we look forward to? Because uh, last time you were on, they didn't. It was before the Georgia race. So um, some of those individual trade policies. So the, the, the overarching problem is that the trade policies have been created behind closed doors to suit the interests of the 500 corporate representatives who are the official US trade advisors. These are the official government advisors. So it's the old saying of he who pays the piper calls the tune. Mm -hmm. And so we have rules in so-called free trade agreements that protect big pharma and raise medicine prices that make it cheaper and easier to offshore jobs for providing special investment protections and really risk insurance for free for companies that leave. We have service sector deregulation rules that make it harder to re-regulate the banks, but also that basically help protect the monopolies of the big tech companies. We have a ban on Buy American procurement in our trade agreement. So President Luck Biden is talking about reinvesting in our communities and building jobs and creating innovation and creating all the green energy and vehicles of the future, except we have trade agreement rules that forbid a president or a Congress from doing many of those things. So we basically across the board have seen working class people clobbered and we have had decades, centuries of racial discrimination that has led to both direct, explicit hiring, firing, promotion, racism. And we have a higher percentage of blacks and Latinos in this country who do not have college degrees and therefore are in the trade impacted sectors. 
So under this version of global, globalization, corporate-led globalization, people with a college degree have largely done okay. Some of them have gotten very rich. It's working people who are getting slammed. And as this report showed, disproportionately Black and Latino working people. So what you're saying is a lot of the civil unrest, including the white supremacy, I said we were going to talk about in a different interview, but now here we are, um, has to has sprung out of trade policy, not necessarily just hate, but the way people are pitted against each other for jobs, etc. I think that there are some people who are just evil, hateful, soul destroyed people who presidents. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. oh, so Go ahead. If, if their economic livelihoods were fine and they were fully secure and they felt included and respected, they would still be vile. But I think, you know, thinking about where I grew up in North Central Wisconsin, I and there are a lot of people who I know, there are a lot of people who I know are not doing this because they hate people of color. There are a lot of people who voted for Trump, who I knew from high school, who basically have been left behind. They've just been left behind, really. And it's the jobs. We used to have a very vibrant, medium-sized manufacturers all over that area. They have largely gone out of business. And so people who had a livelihood where they had a middle-class, secure future have really been left on the curb. And it's not sort of the white working class that is aggrieved, it's working people of all races and ethnicities who by these trade policies have seen their, and by hyper-globalization more broadly, it's not just the trade policies, it's all the set of policies that let the banksters go global and basically deregulate and destabilize, that make the pharma companies able to jack up medicine prices. It's a squeeze on both ends. Wages are down, quality of life goes down, and then all the things the tax base would be supporting if there were still those companies and people making middle class job, making middle class wages in those jobs. So other elements of the communities, the schools, the hospitals, it's a sinking feeling of being really no one caring for them. Mm -hmm. And Trump didn't either. Trump talked about the problem. He promised a lot of stuff. He did not fix any of these problems. The, the statistics are sadly compelling. It's worse. Mm -hmm. However, this is what's on Biden and the Democrat trifecta. Uh, you know, you want to talk about what's different with the Senate. Well, right now the Democrats are in charge and they better damn well deliver for working people. Yeah, they absolutely need to do that. Otherwise, they're going to be out again in, in another two years. What can they do, given that trade policy actually hems in, as you said earlier in the interview, hems in Democratic lawmakers, uh, President Joe Biden, from maybe doing some of the things he is promising? Will they have to focus on trade policy first? What What is the best course of action that you believe will, when it comes to trade, can help working people in, in uh, right away. So what should we be looking for? What should we be pushing for? Well, for some things, they have absolutely the authority to do the right stuff right now, unilaterally. So in day one, under the Trade Act, Congress has delegated authority to the president to change that Buy America waiver for 60 countries. The president can literally come in and on day one do an executive order saying, I am changing the list. I have statutory authority to change the list of countries that qualify for Buy American. Guess what? It's just the U.S. <laughs> and that is something that exists, and they should do that for sure. before they For do people who don't know what that Buy America statute is, can you? I'm just... so sorry. Yeah. Since, since FDR, the U.S. has had a policy that when the government spends money and the government spends a bazillion dollars, more than many, many countries' private sector economies, that they preference buying American-made goods so that we are reinvesting our own tax dollars back into creating jobs and innovation in the country. So buy American means that for instance, if you can buy a computer that's uh, made in the US versus one from China, the one from the US is where the, the tax dollars go. So under our trade agreements, every country that's in a certain kind of trade agreement gets a waiver. So right now buy American- oh, What the heck, yeah. <laughs> All right. I see where this is going. Yes. Okay. I'm buy sorry. American, I didn't cut you off. Buy American and buy from 60 other countries. So we've seen a huge flood of imported goods bought by the government and we've seen our tax dollars offshored. Mm -hmm. 
And like with the two, with well, the 2009 stimulus that Obama did, a vast amount of that money went offshore because they bought all foreign stuff. They made contracts with foreign call centers, mm -hmm. data processors. So what we need to do first, what, what Biden needs to do first is use the authority he has statutorily to at least fix that loophole before they start spending a bunch of money to try and get us out of the COVID economic crisis so it stays home and actually reinvigorates our communities and creates jobs and frankly, some more resilience here. We need to rebuild our ability to make stuff for the sake of our own security and future. So that's, that's number one. But number two, you know, the way the trade regime works you can take the action and then it takes years in order to get a penalty about it. Mm -hmm. And then the fines only start once you've been told to fix something and you don't. Mm -hmm. So the answer is clearly you go ahead and you do the right policy. And then you simultaneously negotiate with our trade partners. You know, you want to bring a case trade partner. You think that violates the rules. We'd like to talk to you about those rules. Those rules need to be made compatible, supporting, not undermining mm -hmm. the agenda we're going to pursue. That's good for people on the planet. So we've got a bunch of hyper-globalization rules from the 90s that are extreme neoliberal, one size fits all. We got to fix that because we're going to actually do the right policies for people on the planet. And we need to make our trade policies support that. Lori, do we have any indication that uh, Joe Biden and the rest of the Dems will do something like this? Well, what is amazing and what warmed my heart through the whole election is in, in Biden's Build Back Better plans there are several places where they explicitly say we need to update our trade agreements to allow us to invest our tax dollars in making goods here. And so our trade partners can do it at home as well. We need to update our trade agreements to allow investment in renewables. There are different places where they basically lay out how the trade agreements are going in the wrong direction and they need to change them. And so we're all going to have to push. We're all going to have to basically give a great big hug of Joe Biden, you were right. Now go do it. Mm -hmm. Because the I like that exact slogan, Joe Biden, you were right now, go do it. Yeah, I mean, the corporations will be pushing to keep the status quo. It's been very profitable. The big corporations have outsourced the jobs. They want to keep doing it. But we, the people, need to basically take this rare opportunity where Democrats have all three House, Senate, and presidency and get some really important shit done. Right, because if uh, they do roll back the 60 countries' ability to be I guess, American uh, <laughs> under the Buy American program, then the you'll have to buy American and therefore you'd have to bring your people back to make it here if you want those dollars. Did I figure it? You got it exactly right. Okay, good, because I'm not an expert here, but I like talking to an expert, which is you, Lori Wallach. Uh, so I appreciate you coming on the program, Director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we look forward to having you back Um Surprise, Lori's, uh, Lori's going to be coming on regularly to keep us abreast as we move from the Trump years uh, into a Democratic uh, a Democratic administration where we might actually be able to push and push and push and get things done. Um, follow Lori on Twitter at Wallach, W-A-L-L-A-C-H, Lori, L-O-R-I. I think we put your name as Josh Holland somehow down there a minute ago. I will fix it. Um, Lori... Uh, global trade, uh, global public citizens, global trade watch. Where can we follow uh, that group, your group? Best thing to do actually is go to re www rethink trade and sign up actually for action alerts because we're going to be tracking everything I just talked about, where the conflicts are, where the public needs to weigh in. If you want to get involved and get the updates, we're not going to bug you a lot, but when something important is happening, you're going to know. Excellent. RethinkTrade.org. Lori Wallach, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it as always. Thank you. You're watching Act TV. I'm Juliana Forlano. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to go to RethinkTrade.org. It's going to be important. We are going to continue to cover this topic and all the others that are important to you, progressives, as we move on. Hopefully we'll get to move on. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm Juliana Forlano. Follow Act TV across platforms. We're pretty much everywhere still. Haven't been thrown off everywhere. I am on Twitter at Juliana Forlano. Thank